In recent years, video games have become one of the biggest entertainment industries in the world. With their rise, however, have come a new set of problems. One of the most prevalent problems in video gaming is toxic behavior. But what is toxicity or toxic behavior? And what can we do about it? In this video essay, we aim to explore what toxicity is, why it happens, and using that knowledge, how game design influences toxicity. We will be interviewing gamers to get their thoughts and experiences on this subject. And with that, let's start the introductions. Uh, I'm Thomas Gummore, aka the Vice President of Tech Esports, aka Nat. Um, so I have played just about every mainstream uh, competitive game. I played uh, League of Legends. I played uh, CS:GO, Rainbow Six Siege, uh, Apex. You name it, I probably played it. Uh, the game I'm most familiar with that I played on the team for a while um, is Rainbow Six Siege, but I do have quite a bit of hours in other games as well. My name is Clarissa Lopez. So I recently just got into gaming, probably about like competitive gaming, maybe my freshman year of college. I'm a senior right now, so about three years ago. Uh, I've been playing consistently every day. I play a lot of Valorant, uh, Overwatch, Apex Legends. Um, and it's something that I really want to pursue probably career-wise. Um, currently right now, I play on the Texas Tech Valorant team, and I am a content manager officer for TTU Esports. I'm Sarah. I go by Zeres in most online spaces. I've been playing Overwatch is my main uh, like online multiplayer game. I've been playing it since about 2017. Now that we're done with the introduction, so let's get right into it. Let's start with the basics. What is toxicity or toxic behavior? I'll be using these two terms interchangeably throughout this essay. Yeah, so there are um, three, I'd say probably about three forms of toxicity. There's uh, verbal toxicity. So whenever people will hop on to the, the voice chat and just start um, yapping away about whatever and being rude and just saying you're terrible at this game, yada yada. Uh, they probably use much more colorful language than I'm going to use, but you get the idea. Um, the other form is through text, pretty much the exact same thing, except that they are um, typing rather than verbally saying it to your, in your ear. Um, and then the third one I would say is actively um, um, throwing or inting uh, the game. Uh, if somebody made you upset, then I, I've seen it quite often where if, if you do something and somebody does not like what you did, then they'll just um, throw the game you're playing, effectively ruining your, your fun because they're not playing the game. There's obviously the very blunt toxicity where, you know, it's just straight up screaming in the mic like we're losing this game because we have a woman on our team or just like being completely rude. And there's also just the very like n subtle toxicity. Where it's like your teammates will purposefully like not calm things and like you know like communicate about certain aspects of the game and just purposefully like throw the game to make sure that you don't win because they don't like you or whichever the reason. So the I think those two are like the big ones when it comes to like toxicity in games, where it's just very blunt, very straightforward, like screaming, being calling you names you know, stuff like that. And then there's a very subtle kind where they'll just not really say anything. They'll throw your game. And then at the end, type in the all chat for everyone to see. Uh, we lost because we had a woman on our team. So to summarize, we can say toxic behavior falls into two main categories. Verbal, whether by voice chat or text chat, harassment of someone, and behavioral, which is acting in a way that harms your teammates. Toxicity isn't just bad manners, though. So we ask the question, what's the difference between bad manners, BM, or also known as poor sportsmanship, and toxicity? Yeah, so um, poor sportsmanship, you know, people, people uh, like if you take a traditional sport, right? If somebody gets a, a touchdown in football, um, they'll occasionally do i forget what the the term is but they'll they'll do some sort of action to like gloat their their touchdown right um i think that that's just poor sportsman 
but that's not necessarily toxicity because it is not being directed at an I think toxicity is being directed at an individual for their specific skills. Now, if you're going to, if I'm going to use the uh, f- football as an example again, imagine if a player went on to like a podcast or something and then started um, talking mad uh, crud um, about an opposing player or a teammate. And they're like, oh, this guy is lazy. This guy doesn't put in the work. He just sits there on the bench collecting his paycheck. I think that that is a form of toxicity. Um, because it is not, it is targeting at a specific person and, um, uh, targeting about their, um, individual lives rather than just like, or like who they are as a person rather than just gloating that they got, um, a win or a victory or something lucky happened or et cetera. Right. Now that we know what toxicity is, why does it matter? Why is this a problem that needs to be addressed? Toxicity does destroy a lot of mental for a lot of people and right now I'm currently experiencing a lot of like burnout when it comes to like competing and playing like um games like competitively just because the toxicity like all around um is really negative and quite recently it's it's been really bad so I've been taking a little bit of a break from gaming and um it kind of sucks because you know I do love the games that I play and it it hurts that now I'm experiencing this burnout because it it's not fun to play anymore when I, you know, having my teammates on my team scream and purposefully throw games because I am simply just a woman. <laughs> How often do you see toxicity in your games? Well, it really just depends. Towards me, it'll probably be one in every, like, six games. But um, what I've witnessed quite recently, too, is a lot of... I don't think there's been a single game that I've played in the past five days where there hasn't been a toxic game room. So we see that toxicity is extremely prevalent in gaming and that it is extremely detrimental to a person's mental health and it promotes sexism and racism, among other things. So why does toxicity happen? What are the root causes of toxicity? I think there's a decent amount of just being upset with your own performance in a game that is reasonable, but it's, it gets beyond that very quickly and starts getting into toxicity. Because you can feel like, man, I'm not performing, I'm not having fun, I feel like I'm just standing here pressing buttons, doing nothing of worth, and that's understandable, we have those days, but then it starts turning into, actually, no, I'm not the problem, it's anyone else in the game but me, it's the enemy, like, can you believe this, like, bullshit, get- uh, sorry. Can you believe this uh, Genji on the other team is, like, he's got to be smurfing, he's got to be doing whatever. Or, like, my teammates are not carrying their weight, my, my brig is trash, like, what are you guys even doing? Um, so toxicity is when, I guess, sort of frustration at your own performance or at uh, things out of your control in the game start getting deflected onto anyone else, sort of. There, there's two main things that lead to someone being toxic. It's either that, like, they're doing bad and they don't want to admit it to themselves, or, like, they know it, but they still want to blame someone else. Or, uh, and I think it might be the more prevalent, is people feeling like, oh my god, I'm doing all the work on this team, but we're still not, like, nobody else is doing anything. We're not, like, getting anywhere, despite all of the effort that I, me, the special one, am, am putting in. So, one of the causes of toxicity is a lack of player accountability. So what about player agency? How does that tie into toxicity? When all the agency is on your yourself, right? Then the only person you can be toxic at is yourself. And if you wanted to get in that, yeah, you can beat yourself up and you say that you're being toxic to yourself and doing like bad habits and stuff. You could you could take that argument, right? Um uh, but but I don't think that typically happens in those types of games um, versus whenever you're playing a multiplayer game uh, where you've got teammates, you have things that are outside of your control. And when things don't go well that are outside of your control, you get very frustrated. And then because you're being frustrated, it's much easier to fall into that toxicity. Part of it does come down to game design with toxicity, too. It's like you have a finite number of teammates if like if you're if you're just in a normal game of Overwatch, even just base Overwatch, right? You've got five teammates, five people on a team. Everyone's supposed to be doing about twenty percent of the work. 
that's not how it goes. That's just never how it goes. So like someone who's fallen behind, it's really easy to, to, you know, pull up the scoreboard because they made the stats publicly viewable in the game. It's so funny, but it also leads to so much more toxicity. How does identity or insecurity play into toxicity? Um, I think if you're toxic, in my personal opinion, you are just insecure about yourself. That's that's pretty much the best I can say. If you are someone who is going to be toxic, um, it I think it's just solely based off just insecurity. If you know, majority of the time, if someone's being toxic towards me, it's solely because they're insecure as a player because of um like how better I'm performing, and they're like, oh well, there's a girl on my team who's performing better than me. And, like, you know, like, it shouldn't be that way. Like, a lot of the time, like, because it's not very widely accepted that women in- are good at games. So people will be toxic towards women because, you know, they have that mentality. And because a lot of the times, women are probably better than a lot of men playing games, you know. And, yeah, you know, like, I will, like, be playing super well and people just be toxic to me because I'm a woman and because I'm doing better than them and they just simply can't accept the fact that there's probably a lot of girls who are better at them than games than them. Uh, well, a lot of people like to target identities no matter like whether or not it's even an accurate uh, perception of someone. Like I've seen uh, slurs centered around uh, sexuality quite commonly and that's an instant report, easy. Anonymity definitely plays a big part in people feeling like, like it's People just say things that they would never say to another person to their face in, like, reasonable company, but it's just like, okay, well, they're not a person, and they don't know who I am as a person, so, like, I can say whatever, you know? Uh, And feeling, and it's also a part of the only perception of someone's, or for the most part, the only perception of someone's identity that you get in a game is their performance in that game. So that's just something to tie on to. Um, the exception to that being, like, whatever you think you perceive off of their voice. Uh, but a lot of it is tied to just how they're doing in-game. So it's like, well, they're no more of a person than their, like, like negative KD in this Overwatch game. So, like, I'm I'm free to insult them on that or whatever. But, like, people have jobs and, like, families and friends and lives and are people and are not uh, their 007 stats or whatever it is you're wanting to insult them over. Now that we've looked at some of the causes of toxicity, what are some design choices that influence toxicity? A lot of games will tend to, like, sexualize women in general. And so I see why, like, that will cause people to be sexist. Because, you know, you have a a game that you play a lot and you see women objectified. You know what I mean? And so that case, I can can see it. For a game like Valorant, I think solely that's just how the player base is. And I don't understand it myself. That one's like, it's, it's not even like that, but people, I think that one is just solely just the player base and that I will never understand because compared to a lot of other games I play, Valorant has probably one of the larger women-based games, you know, like Valorant has its own, um, like looking at like professional and like competitive wise has its own league for women and those who identify as like non-binary. So the company itself is very, you know, accepting of women and trying to you know really get them out there to play the game so that one is just the player base i will never understand why the player base is like that but you know what i mean it it really just it, it comes down to that but a lot of games were i don't know off the top of my head what will be like a good one i would say probably like league of legends which is kind of crazy because league and valorant are under the same company um the, it's same solely because women are pretty much object- objectified and so that i see a lot of toxicity just coming off of that so we've looked at how character design can influence sexism in toxicity how about some other mechanics such as matchmaking in multiplayer games or 
the scoreboard. A research study in 2021 suggested that a clear scoreboard that properly communicates the impact that each player has the team would help decrease toxicity. Yeah, something that really feeds into like me feeling frustrated whenever I'm playing the game is um, it's been it's been worse lately because they keep adjusting it like on the uh, like engineering backside of the game. They're adjusting how matchmaking works because it's really, really bad. And it leads to a lot of games where we load in and there's just not a shot that that like your team progresses. It's just, why would you put me in a game against, like, why am I seeing people using the master's title in my games? I'm, I'm barely plat, you know? Why am I seeing these players that are much higher ranked than me? And it's, it's not your fault. It's not your teammates fault because you definitely can't blame your teammates whenever you know that you are also plat. Like if everyone else is on the same level as you, which they probably more or less are, then well, you're still going to be doing bad because the game itself is just so bad with their matchmaking right now. Um, well, I, I mentioned the matchmaking. That's not necessarily an intentional design choice because obviously the like, intent behind matchmaking like the goal with it is to be as fair and have as many enjoyable games as possible but you can say it's sort of not their fault because they want to it's just a difficult challenge to address but also it's really bad and it was good at one point but i guess also there's just less people playing it now so it's harder to put together fair matches um I also mentioned the scoreboard. I don't really know where the scoreboard stands in relation to, like, how it was in Overwatch 1, because I don't have any other games to base it off of. But in Overwatch 1, it was a metal system where, like, you could see if you were, like, it, for a given stat, like, let's say damage, if you had, like, gold damage, meaning you're doing the most damage in the game, you could see that, but you couldn't see how that compared with the rest of your team. So it was just an assessment of your personal performance. Which gave the option to lie to your teammates and say like, <laughs> like I've got I've got gold kills when you don't. Um, but that wasn't really yeah. I but I it's hard to sort of tell where that stands in comparison to the new scoreboard where you can now see the ranks of everyone both on your team and also on the enemy team. You can see how everyone in the game is performing. It I think in some cases it helps because you can tell like okay, well, we're just we're just straight up losing because we can't do the, like, 11,000 damage that that Bastion has done in the last five minutes. But at the same time, it, it can very much hurt the situation because, again, you can open it up and see it in an instant, like, oh my god, we've got Agent 007 on our team, we've got this Hanzo that's, that's hasn't killed anything in the past four minutes, and we can see it clearly put on blast in front of everyone. But shockingly, I don't think that actually hurts that much. I think it gives sort of an understanding. I, I think the scoreboard inherently has to come with an understanding that it, it, it is not an accurate representation of someone's actual performance in a specific game or in, in even a specific team fight. So I don't know if there's any like one thing that could be added or removed from it to, that would make it be like, okay, now the scoreboard is a purely accurate representation of exactly how everyone in a game is doing. And I don't think it would even be helpful if it was possible to do that. Um, I, I think the scoreboard sort of exists how it does. And I think it needs to come with an understanding that like, okay, sure. Your, your Sigma, the, the character I play, he might not be, um, like mitigating the most damage. He might not be getting the most kills, but he's actually surviving really well when he needs to. He's grouping up, helping the team form coherently around him to push in to the enemy and like have a successful push off of it. Or like it doesn't like the scoreboard's never going to show that one really good rock that canceled the Genji ult and saved the whole team. Like it's never going to do that. And I think that's okay. I think it needs to come with the understanding that there's there's numbers on there that can give you a feel for why you might be winning, why you might be losing, who on the enemy you need to focus if someone's doing an awful lot and it's showing up in the numbers. But also at the same time, you need to understand it's not showing the actual impact that players are having.
The same study referenced earlier identified six design principles to help reduce toxic behavior. The first was a mechanism that helps detect toxic behavior. This would be paired with the second design principle of immediate feedback. These two together allow for base level feedback on toxic behavior, although this is fairly easy to circumvent. So the third design principle was designing in a, in a way that discourages prejudice. A negative example of this would be the objectification of women mentioned earlier, where this is a design that encourages prejudice. The fourth design principle is the increased visualization of information. For example, showing how each character impacts the team, showing the impact that each player has, and this has to be paired with the fifth design principle, which is transparency on how the game functions on a fundamental level. Finally, the sixth principle is to incentivize players who actively encourage a positive environment. Finally, there are some games, although not player versus player competitive games, that exhibit good design that discourages toxicity. One such game is Deep Rock Galactic. What are some of the design choices that were made by Deep Rock Galactic to help encourage a positive environment? Yeah, it's 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 about like there's more impact that your individual performance has on the reward that you get for completing a match or however the rounds or it's not a it's not a PvP game. It's everyone is collaborating towards a common goal. Deep Rock Galactic also fosters a sense of camaraderie and a lot of the voice lines and features of the game and the lobby encourage you to work together as a team and encourage one another. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But your individual performance in that game is directly tied to whatever reward you get at the end. So, like, even if you see, like, someone that you're working with, a teammate or however you call them, uh, is falling behind, is not contributing as much, you can sort of rest assured knowing, you know what? This doesn't hurt me all that much. I'm going to keep doing my bit. They're going to do their bit. They're not going to get as much because they're just not doing as much, and that's perfectly fine. So it's, it's, it's direct individual performance ties to the reward, which they have confirmed is not even a thing at all in Overwatch, because I used to think that it was like, even if you lose a game, if your stats, like if your individual performance was really good, it wouldn't, like, detract from you that much but no they've confirmed that no it's just directly tied to wins and losses and the ranks of the games and of the enemies and teammates so it's the inherent design yes so the question really starts to become how can this be implemented into something like a pvp game because rock and stone or sorry deep rock galactic <laughs> just does it so perfectly so there's got to be at least some things that can be learned from that and brought over into PvP games.